Hi right, guys, so welcome back to the channel. Welcome back uh, to the information that we're giving to you. Remember to subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. Uh, a lot of persons have sent comments to me. They've sent uh, WhatsApp messages. They've been asking me for more information. I just want to put it out there. I'm not a geologist. So <laughs> the information I'm giving to you comes from my journalistic background, which is 20 years. Which I'm still a journalist. And I'm just giving you information because I think it is necessary to enlighten you on what's happening around you. Someone also pointed out to me that in this day and age, in this time, we cannot deflect from the Bible, basically, as to what it's saying about these things that are happening around us. And I'm very, very happy that person brought it up because in Matthew 24, it talks about our earthquakes, pestilences uh, in diverse places, right? And um, it's Matthew 24, right? Yeah, that's correct, Matthew 24. And uh, the Bible talked about all these being the beginning of sorrows. I don't think that there has been a time in the history of this world where we've seen so many earthquakes and the frequency of which we're seeing the earthquakes. So we know that the Bible is spot on. And we are not ashamed to talk about that. It has never been proven wrong. And I don't think anyone will ever be able to prove the Bible wrong. Everything that is written there is happening around us. And it's happening in more frequency. Remember, it's been happening before, but there's never been a time it's happening at a more frequent rate. I'm quite sure that you can testify to that where you're living there in Jamaica. All right. Um, so persons wanted to know because Jamaica sits basically on a massive fault line. And um, we're going to talk about that today. It runs right through Jamaica, right through from east to west. So I want to talk about that today. But before we do that, let's get into this one. Hey there, history buffs. Today, I'm diving into the seismic history of Jamaica, a land of sun, sea, and surprisingly, earthquakes. Buckle up, because this story is a roller coaster of natural disasters and resilience. Let's start with the infamous Port Royal. Back in 1692, this bustling port, often called the wickedest city on earth, met a catastrophic end. A massive earthquake, estimated at a magnitude of 7.5, struck and sent two-thirds of the city plunging into the Caribbean Sea. Imagine, within minutes, buildings, streets and lives submerged. It was a wake-up call, reshaping not just the geography, but also the destiny of Jamaica. Fast forward to 1907. Another significant quake hit Kingston, the capital. This earthquake, around magnitude 6.5, wreaked havoc killing over a thousand people and causing widespread destruction. The aftermath saw fires raging through the city, compounding the tragedy. But it also sparked a wave of rebuilding and modernization, making Kingston more resilient. In more recent times, Jamaica continues to feel the Earth's tremors. The 2010 Haiti earthquake, though centered miles away, served as a stark reminder of the region's vulnerability. Jamaica's proximity to the Enriquillo Plantain Garden Fault Zone means it's always on alert. Preparedness drills, building codes and public awareness campaigns are now part of the national psyche. But why does Jamaica experience so many earthquakes? It's all about tectonic plates. The island sits near the boundary of the North American and Caribbean plates, making it a hotspot for seismic activity. These geological forces shape not just the landscape, but also the history and culture of Jamaica. Despite the threats, Jamaicans have shown remarkable resilience. Time and again, they've rebuilt, adapted and moved forward. So that basically was just to whet your appetite, so to speak, and um, to let you know what we were talking about. Now, I want to take a look at the image on the screen here. I'm going to show you this. Take a look at it where you see Walton Fall Zone. It runs through Jamaica. The Enriquillo Plantation Garden Fall Zone. It runs through Jamaica and it comes off of Hispaniola into Haiti. And you remember Haiti had a big earthquake recently in 2010, massive earthquake. And then you have the fault zone, um, Septenarian fault zone to the top. And then you have the another one over here um oriented fault zone and then you have the on a micro plate in the middle there so and then you have the caribbean plate below so you see where jamaica fits into the scheme of things places you in a very very precarious situation right you see where it fits into the scheme of things 
um, it's that is that is something else to to behold. Let's let's go and I'll, I'll give you a little assessment here. It comes from Vashon Wright, who is uh, she did her dissertation with the Southern Methodist University in the United States, and she spoke about it. She talked about the in Wikwilo Plantation Garden Fault Zone, it's a system of predominantly left lateral strike slip faults, so they are faults, extending through eastern Jamaica, western Hispaniola. The fault zone has generated at least one large magnitude six quake per century. With the last five centuries, these earthquakes include the 2010 magnitude seven earthquake in Haiti, which killed 300,000 people, and the 1907 Jamaican earthquake, which killed 900 people. And both earthquakes resulted in significant infrastructural damages, tsunamis, landslides, and ground fissures. Now, her dissertation provides insights into the history and the societal impacts of the active faulting and the earthquake triggered geohazards within the EPGFC hearing. So, um, it shows that Eastern Jamaica hosts a previously unrecognized. Uh, strike slip fault system that is within five kilometers of Kingston, the capital city, where two thirds of the population live. And um, this newly identified fault system is an extension of a pre preeminent strike slip fault within the EPGFC. And um, the study also identified the fault system. It's active and could generate a magnitude 5.8 to 6.9 earthquake in Jamaica. Now, historical reports suggest that the magnitude 5 or greater earthquake within the Jamaican section of that zone will likely cause slope failures within Kingston, the capital, especially Port Royal Beach. All right. So remember, I spoke to you about Professor Mitchell, who talked about getting prepared for the big one. And it's something that you cannot lose sight of. He talked about preparing for the big one. And it can happen at any time. And that is something that you have to prepare yourself for. And when I say prepare, you don't know when it's coming because there is no warning, so to speak, right? Like a hurricane, right? But in terms of what to do when you start to feel the trembling and the tremors going on, you know what to do, right? Because some people lose, lose it at that time and end up dying when they could have been saved. So you have to know, but I'm just bringing to you the information that Jamaica really sits on a massive fault running east to west. That is, there's a Walton, there's the, the, the Inquilo, and it's a hell of a zone. And I think that Jamaica is really in a precarious situation. You're talking about faults that run right through the island, east to west. I mean, if, if it was one part of the island, you could say, well, you know, but, but you don't want it anywhere, but it runs east and west. That's put you in a very precarious situation. But I think this video that I'm going to show you is going to give you more information on what we're talking about. All right. So take a look at this video. Jamaica is the third largest island of the Greater Antilles along the Northern Caribbean Sea. The Greater Antilles straddle the northern boundary of the Caribbean plate, a mostly oceanic plate that moves two centimeters per year eastward with respect to the North American plate. In this region, the Caribbean plate is broken into at least four microplates as the North American Caribbean plate boundary changes from frontal subduction at the Lesser Antilles Trench to oblique subduction at the Puerto Rico Trench to oblique collision at the North Hispaniola Trench and finally to strike slip motion in the Cayman Trough. The Gonov microplate stretches from the Cayman spreading center on the west to western Hispaniola on the east. The north and south boundaries of the Gonov microplate are dominantly left lateral strike slip faults with rates of motion about one centimeter per year. Most of the earthquakes occur on or near the microplate boundaries. Two recent major earthquakes emphasize how proximity to population centers controls human impact. The January 12, 2010 magnitude 7 earthquake near Port-au-Prince caused over 100,000 fatalities. Although the January 28, 2020 magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake on the Orient Fault released 20 times more energy, its location far from populated islands resulted in minimal impact and no fatalities. 
Notice the offset between the Enriquillo Plantain Garden Fault in southeast Jamaica and the Walton Fault in northwest Jamaica. This is a restraining bend in the left lateral strike slip fault system along the southern edge of the Gonav microplate. As left lateral strike slip motion progresses, an overlap or collision between the blocks develops in the bend. This overlap becomes a zone of thrust and strike slip faulting between the crustal blocks. Over millions of years, displacement along the Gonav microplate and the Caribbean plate in the restraining bend has broken the oceanic crust of Jamaica into blocks separated by strike slip and thrust faults. Resulting uplift is responsible for Jamaica being an island and is continuing to raise the Blue Mountains. We see that active faulting and recent seismicity are concentrated on the Plantain Garden and Blue Mountains faults in southeast Jamaica and, to a lesser extent, along the central Jamaica fault system. Major destructive earthquakes occurred in 1692 and 1907. The epicenters are not well located, but occurred within or adjacent to eastern Jamaica. Kingston, Jamaica's largest city, like Port-au-Prince, is underlain in many areas by unconsolidated sands and gravels. Port Royal, the unofficial capital of Jamaica in the late 1600s, was built largely on a sand spit in Kingston Harbor. Port Royal, described as the most important English city of the New World and one of the wickedest places on earth, was home port for many true pirates of the Caribbean. By early 1692, the population of 6,500 occupied the 2,000 buildings. Then, on June 7, 1692, an earthquake estimated at magnitude 7.5 struck. Ground shaking, liquefaction, and lateral spreading combined with submarine landslides so that two-thirds of the town sank into the sea and resulting tsunamis washed over the sunken and damaged buildings. Around 2,000 people were killed immediately by the earthquake and tsunami, with many victims entombed in sand that liquefied during ground shaking, then solidified when ground shaking stopped. An additional 3,000 deaths followed from injuries and disease. Port Royal was partially rebuilt and then mostly destroyed by a fire in 1703, and Kingston became the major city. By the early 1900s, Kingston had grown to a population of 60,000. Then, on January 14, 1907, a magnitude 6.5 earthquake struck the city. The greatest intensity of ground shaking, liquefaction, and damage occurred in the business and harbor districts where over 80% of buildings were destroyed. In addition to destruction from effects of ground shaking, seiches, or standing waves, occurred in Kingston Harbor, resulting in seawater inundating areas near the shoreline. Tsunamis, likely caused by submarine landslides that severed communication cables, reached two meters height on northern shores. This earthquake caused 800 to 1,000 fatalities. In the succeeding 113 years, Kingston has grown to over one million people and the population of Jamaica is approaching 3 million. Rapid growth and the high poverty rate has resulted in vulnerable buildings. Since 1907, Jamaica has experienced only four moderate to strong earthquakes, while over 20 deadly and damaging hurricanes have affected the island. Yet, Jamaica is cut by strike slip and thrust faults that, at any time, can produce major earthquakes, like the 2010 Haiti earthquake. Jamaica's Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management has successfully promoted awareness of earthquake hazards and personal protective actions. The next step on the path to earthquake resilience is to improve earthquake resistance of buildings and infrastructure. So there you have it. Um, and I placed that on the screen again just for emphasis, but there you have it. So there's a lot of information that you can consume. There's a lot of information out there that you need to have and uh, pay attention to what's happening around you because sometimes as um, the people used to say what you don't know could kill you so you need to pay attention to that um, like i said earthquakes are not like hurricanes where you know when it's coming but if you know information if you know your surroundings if you know where you're living when the tremors roll in you at least know what to do to try to be safe and to stay alive so I just wanted to remind you of that today because people were asking for more information and I think it was necessary for me to come back and show you that video. I think that video encapsulates everything.
about what's taking place in Jamaica and why there's so much earthquake in Jamaica in terms of geological features. On, on, on the other side of it, we know exactly what the Bible says. And we know that is going to take place more and more. It's going to be more frequent. We know that for a fact. If we don't, then we fool ourselves. But Professor Mitchell stated that we are to be ready at any time for the big one. And you're talking about a seven magnitude quake around there. Um, I remember last year they were saying that Trinidad was overdue for a massive one. And I noticed since then there have been a lot of sh quakes in and around Trinidad. So anything is possible these days. Anything is possible. Uh, Mother Earth, I believe, is getting very weak. And so a lot of things can happen and will happen. So thanks for joining guys again today. And um, like I said, subscribe, share the video so that YouTube will reproduce it more in their um, recommended videos so people can see it because information is always knowledge and information is key. Take it easy.